Hello, my name is Stephen Ligoff. Welcome to the SkyTeach channel. Today, we're going to be mixing it up between English and Russian in order to better influence your students' active pronunciation of complicated suffixes that produce their own sound. English is very different from Russian, cannot be talked about otherwise. It's a Germanic language that's been built up over the years with a mix of French, Latin, and a whole lot of other weird stuff. Russian has been standardized, is a lot less tricky, has firm rules. Both of them have entirely different ways of speaking sounds that do not exist in each other's language. They do not exist on a map. This becomes a particularly sticky issue when we have letter formations within English that sound and look alien to the Russian ear and eye. It's a simple, tricky you know, turn of language that we just can't get around. I myself am learning Russian and I have particular problems even just looking at on, ano, ana, because to me, on looks like o, oh, Oh my god! Anam sound looks like oh no. <laughs> oh no no no! Ano uh, looks like ana because the o is often the, pronounced like an a in Russian and it's just very confusing. Malako. This is particularly poignantly found in English where we look at the suffixes, the ts, the ts, the ed, the o-u-g-h-t, the ought, and the infamous ing, ing. Russians always get stuck on them. I'm simply going to take you through it step by step. Accompanying the video will be a short exercise to help you along as well. Let's begin. First, we have the tss. Now, this is uh, found all over English. Waits, wants, and with this, we see the Russian I looking at that and trying to divide it into two different sounds. It is something that I myself can't understand as not coming from a Russian background, but I see it with every single one of my students, where they try to say tis and can't put it together. This is confusing to me since Russians have this sound, the uh, I'm so fancy. And Russians, for some reason, cannot make that bridge. They cannot make that connection without deliberately being told as much. So thoughts, I always put in the letter, uh, right at the end for my students, just so that they can bring it together in their mind. It's very simple, and as a training wheel system, I would highly recommend just whenever you see that together, above it, writing the uh, Russian letter. It's just helps you remember as a beginner and make your mind come together a little bit more. Another suffix is the ed. Finished, diminished, missed. Now these all sound like t, and the Russian mind looks at that and again, doesn't put it, them together as a collective suffix. So they go want ed, which works for wanted, but not for missed. You sound clumsy, you sound slow, and even a Russian learner sees that as being uh, incorrect, and it slows them down and reduces courage. And of course, this is the most important thing about young learners with English or beginners with English. Courage, confidence in what you're saying, and when you sound clumsy, it slows you down and inhibits your learning ability for minutes at a time. Now you need only find the courage to speak the words. Simply think about it. The ED, the Mekis Nak at the end. It brings it down into something closer to a T. Missed, stopped. This is essentially how it's spoken in English. And it's much simpler to say. All you need to do is stop looking at it like ED and look at it as a sound in and of itself. Moving on to the next area. Now this is one which uh, always ruins any lesson with a Russian student and uh, teachers be warned. But be warned. You are going to come across this. In the attachment to this video, there is going to be a tongue twister, which I'm going to provide, uh, one that I give to all my Russian students to test their reading ability and their pronunciation ability and to help with accent training. Most of it is built around the O-U-G-H-T suffix. Thought, wrought, naught, just a long O and then a T at the end. But this is many letters stuck together, and when the Russian student reads this, it is oigit. Sad tree Or even oit. It doesn't work well, and that's not a problem with the reading, that's not a problem with the student. It's just a problem with the Russian mouth and the Russian mind putting together how to pronounce this uh, suffix. But there is a fantastic way around this problem, and one that works every single time. Mechiznak. At the end of every O-U-G-H-T suffix, simply put that little letter in at the end. Next up, we have a very much sought after affair. I did not take this city to preside over the injustice I fought to destroy. You bought and sold companies. 
I, I'm going to demonstrate it in the information that I provide along with this video. Every time a Russian student reads this, it is absolutely no problem. And why is that? That little suffix in the Russian language brings the Russian mouth together. Uh, if you think about it like a circle collapsing inwards, or that little suffix brings it together with a soft end, and that tricks the Russian mind into having absolutely no problem with the suffix at all. And that's simply what you need to convey to your students. Every time you see that suffix, little mechiznak at the end, and it brings the mouth together perfectly. On for the final bit, and the one at which uh, I don't have much to talk about, because it's surprisingly simple, but is always a problem within the Russian language. Ing, the ing suffix, going, coming, walking. Famously, Russians pronounce this as ink. Oh, it says, fearless leader is watching. Very famous uh, trait of the Russian accent. It doesn't need to be. This is so because Russians, as I mentioned before, uh, have very few um, representations within Russian of the multiple letter suffix that we see in English. Uh, the most common is O, G, O. I'm not really sure what that's called, but the uh, as we look at the Metro, Prospect Vernatskova uh, at the end. Prospect Vernatskova. Not so many in Russian, too many in English, and so Russians don't really expect it. So when they look at ing, they see ing, g, which to Russians, because of the uh, lapse in mouth movement, as we'll call it, produce the ink. Simply you have to explain to them that these are not three letters, this is one sound. Produced from the back of the mouth, with the tongue at the roof of the mouth, open mouth, e, walking, going, coming. It's somewhat similar to the mouth production of the e. The mouth has to be open, the tongue has to be on the roof of the mouth. It's simply a reduced version that cuts off much sooner. Ing, softer, simpler, but available to the Russian palate. Show your students how to manipulate these suffixes so it's easier for their eyes, for their mind, for their Russian mouth to get around the formation of these new sounds. Thank you for joining me today. I have been Stephen Ligoff. Please subscribe to Sky Teach for more resources on teaching. Thank you for joining me today. Have a good one. I hate finishing. Uh, editors, later, please put a, the, the, the Russian letter in my hand when I do this. That was me.